Hey gang, Brian here, aka Phoenix Nova. Today, being a new 3D printer myself, and I want to be able to like help you learn from my mistakes or even sometimes my successes. So today we're going to talk about some tools you might want to put together when you start doing 3D printing. You ready? Let's do this. Okay, by no means is this going to be a comprehensive list, uh, but it's some of the basic items that uh, I have read about, seen that are going to be useful. Uh, I don't even have all the items up here that we might eventually use. Uh, for instance, I have a mouse sander that is downstairs in the garage. Uh, but uh, this is definitely some of the things that you want to look into between equipment you're going to use and, and some basic safety stuff too. Uh, starting right here, we have got of starting at the end really because this is something you're going to use more for post-processing of your prints. When your prints come out they're going to have hairs on them, they're going to have seams and parts of the support that you need to break off and then when it breaks off it might leave some parts there. So beyond just the sanding that you're used to, uh, you're probably going to use something like a utility knife. Uh, this is going to be useful in cutting down those edges, shaving them off with plastic, uh, being able to remove some of the edges there. Uh, I mean, scissors, you know, you might use them, might not. But what this is all sitting on is what is called a self-healing cutting mat. Your wife or a significant other or spouse is probably going to frown if you're using these sharp implements, uh, soldering guns, anything like that, on their good table. Uh, while I even have a kind of hobby table here, I'm going to go, I would go ahead and use this healing mat uh, to cut on. It's very, very rigid, very hard. Uh, you can get these on Amazon. They're very thick. Uh, they're not flimsy at all. Uh, so don't be afraid of slipping and hitting and going down and uh, going down into it and taking a chunk out of it. Now, some other tools. Well, if you're going to have tools, you're probably going to need a toolbox. Now you can pick up any toolbox, of course. Uh, I picked up this one for a couple reasons. One, it has a compartment at the top that you can use to store other items in. Makes it a little bit easier to store stuff. But, of course, inside are our tools. So, you're going to be working with a variety of different plastics. Some of the stuff is going to be hot. Some of the stuff... Uh, when it comes off, you're using scrapers, and some of that's going to hurt if you hit yourself. So let's talk about safety. One, gloves. These gloves right here are specifically made for uh, anti-cut. So if you slip on something while you're taking a print off the build plate, uh, the idea is they're not anti-puncture, so you can, still can get hurt, but they're generally anti-cut. Uh, something with a sharp edge is just not going to cut you nearly as much with these. Uh, of course, there's no guarantees on any of this, but you know, you're going to do the best you can to protect your hands. Now, the other thing I like about these is they actually have capacitive touch tips on them, so you can still use your phone. Uh, these are a very nice, tight fit. Uh, this is a large, I feel that I have full control of my hand. They also have a rubbery side on one side and a softer side on one side, and you can wear them either way. Um, I'm not going to promote a particular brand over the other brand, but uh, if you are interested, these happen to be TYH Supply gloves. Additionally, to protect your hands, you never know what's going to fly off of a build plate. Again, sometimes you're working with hot plastic, sometimes you're working with sharp pieces. Uh, so it always helps to have safety goggles. Now, you're not going to use these all the time, but when you're removing a print from the build plate, when you're doing post-processing and you've got bits of plastic that may be flying around, hey, you know, better safe than sorry. Might as well wear the safety goggles. Now, another tool that you're going to use are flush cutters. Uh, flush cutters are going to be used any time that you're cutting the filament especially after you've pulled the filament out of a hot end and it's got the stringy end on it. So putting that back in in that condition is eventually going to lead to problems, possibly jams. So your flush cutters cut a nice good end before you put the filament back into the extruder. 
A couple other items. Got a small kit of extremely small drill bits, uh, 0.2 millimeter up to 0.6 millimeter. These are used to gently clean out your nozzle if it's extremely jammed. Now there's other things you should be doing first, including heating the nozzle up, taking the nozzle off, heating it up with a uh, torch or a heat gun to melt the plastic inside and try to get it out that way. This is going to be a last resort for cleaning your nozzle though. The reason why is most nozzles are made out of brass and these are going to tear those nozzles up if you are not extremely careful. Uh, several people though say that taking it and very, very gently twirling it is a good way to loosen some of the stuff up the nozzle without having to take the entire equipment apart. Kind of back to post-processing here. We've got a set of diamond files. Uh, very small files, different shapes, sizes, used to be able to increase the size of a small hole, work off any supports that are inside of a hole, get into those small little places in between that are going to be very difficult to clean out, and then just you can't clean out with needle nose pliers. You nose pliers will work for the vast majority of the time, and there's some very small ones, but sometimes they just can't get into the small crooks and crannies like a good pair of files is going to be. Next up, scrapers. When you're removing your print off the build plate, you're going to have a number of different materials there, from painter's tape to build tack, PEI. Some of those you may want to keep intact as much as possible. So these are scrapers that have uh, a bit of a rounded curve to some of the corners on it. That way it doesn't dig in as much. Uh, these are not metal, they're kind of a plastic, a very hard plastic and uh, even a small one for being able to work under the corner a little bit. Certainly you're going to need something like that. There are, of course, metal scrapers out there. Again, as long as you're careful with it, you should be okay with your surface that you want to protect. A couple other items. One, and usually one of the most expensive items in your kit, is going to be calipers. Now you can get Normal analog calipers. Uh, there's also types like this, which is a digital caliper. Uh, this allows you to measure very small items uh, to be able to make sure that you're getting the exact measurement. Uh, good calipers are going to read out in a variety of... Let me pause more. Good calipers are going to read out in a variety of different ways, uh, inches, millimeters, for most common, obviously. There we go. But this is going to be useful both in verifying These are useful both in verifying the size of something that comes out of the printer for the tolerances that you need for whatever device you're making, but they're also useful for properly measuring what you're trying to create. So if you're trying to recreate a broken piece off of something that you want to 3D print, well then the calipers are going to give you those precise measurements that you can use in your CAD program so that you can develop the 3D model to print out. Next up, desiccant. All this is is small silicon packets to absorb moisture. The reason why that's important is because the filament you're printing with can change the nature of how it prints with some of the moisture that it absorbs. So you want to store your filament in nice bags such as these vacuum bags. Uh, these are just basic vacuum bags that you can suck the air out with your vacuum. Uh, you place your filament in there, put a desiccant right in the middle of the spool. Nice convenient place to put it. Suck all the air out, and your filament's nice and safe. Lastly, and also for post-processing, is the heat gun. Heat gun's kind of handy because it is going to be able to heat up that plastic 
and allow you to change things. If it warped a little bit and you are printing parts that need to fit together and be flat, you can heat them back up and kind of push them down and get some of that warp out. Now, if you're gonna get a heat gun, try to watch for something. Uh, this is an example of one that has both different settings of heat, you can actually change the temperature on it, and also, in this case, two different fan level settings. So how hard it, of course, is going to push the air. Okay, gang. Well, that's some of the basics that I have in my toolkit. Why don't you let me know what you have in your toolkit that I don't have in the comments down below. Also, if you like this type of video, if you like what you see, please share and comment on it. Like the channel. Definitely subscribe is going to help me out. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time.